in the last section, we put together the bare minimum amount of code required to get our Express server running, and then we accessed it inside the browser. I want to take a little bit of time to now go back and analyze every last piece of the code snippet that we just added inside of here. Now, before I start that, you might be thinking, Stephen, this is really basic Express stuff. I already know Express. Just get on with it. Well, I want to remind you that this course is really for everyone who has previous experience with React and Redux. And I'm kind of assuming that if you're here, you might be a little bit newer to Express. So I just wanted to cover everything from absolute basics and then have a really solid foundation and go from there. So if this stuff is review for you, great. Hey, it's review. Just take the review. Otherwise, hopefully you're learning something as you go through it. Anyways, let's get back to it. So we're going to analyze this little segment of code right here. Now I've got a little diagram that breaks it down piece by piece. So in this diagram, you see app git forward slash rec res. Well, that matches up with app git forward slash rec res and so on. Okay, so let's go through this thing piece by piece. First off is the app object. Remember, this represents the underlying running Express server. The Express server has some number of route handlers associated with it. By calling app.git, by calling that function git, we are creating a brand new route handler. So this entire segment of code right here, we would refer to as a route handler. Next is the git function. So we called app.git. This tells Express that we want to create a route handler that is watching for incoming HTTP requests with a very specific method. HTTP request methods are used to indicate the type or kind of what the request is attempting to accomplish. So we made a route handler that is associated with the get method. Express has access to several other methods as well. So we used get. Get is associated with getting information about some particular record. We can also set up route handlers that are associated with other methods as well. So app.post or app.put, app.delete, app.patch. Each of these request methods, again, are associated with some intent. Now, we're not really required to follow these very explicitly. They are more of kind of convention of what we follow so that it's really clear at just a glance what any given request's overall purpose or overall goal is. So we would say that any request with a get type method is attempting to get information. A post wants to send information to the server. A put wants to update some properties of something. A delete wants to delete something, and a patch wants to update, update just like one or two properties of something. So over time, we're going to be using some of these different methods to create different route handlers that are associated with different purposes of incoming requests. Okay, so now the next one, the forward slash. The forward slash tells Express to watch for incoming requests that are, that are attempting to access some very particular route. And so we would refer to this forward slash right here as the route portion of the handler. This specifically instructs, instructs Express to say, if anyone visits the route localhost colon 5000 slash. So whenever we type into our browser localhost colon 5000, we don't, you and I don't really write on slash right here, but the browser is just kind of interpreting or assuming that we are attempting to visit localhost colon 5000 slash. So this is kind of an implied uh, forward slash right here. And Express really takes that to assume if anyone comes to like our root route, that's what the forward slash here is really indicating. We could just as easily have a route of something like slash greeting like so. And then to create an equivalent route handler over inside of our code base, we would say slash greeting. So now a request to localhost colon 5000 slash greeting would execute this route handler right here. Okay, but for right now, we're going to leave it as just slash. Back over here. So we're now on to the arguments to the arrow function, which is the second argument of the get request handler. The first argument is referred to as rec. This is shorthand terminology for request. It's a JavaScript object that represents the incoming request. So it has a bunch of data that says a little bit about who is making the request and some associated data with it. Next is the res object. 
res is short for response, and it represents the response or the data that is about to be sent back to whoever made the incoming request. Finally, is the body of the arrow function. We put in there res.send, and then we provided a plain JavaScript object. That tells Express that we want to immediately close the request and send back a response containing the JSON data hi colon there, which is why we saw in our browser hi colon there. So this is a little bit of JSON data right here. Now, one thing that you'll notice with the actual request handler, having broken all this code down, is the second argument was an arrow function. The arrow function is called automatically by Express anytime some request comes into this route right here, a forward slash. And so over time, this function right here might be getting called many hundreds or thousands or tens of thousands of times in a single day, or maybe hundreds of times in a single minute, or maybe even dozens of times in a single second. So this function right here will be executed every single time a single request comes in, attempting to make a get request to the route of forward slash. Now the final thing that I want to point out is the last line here of app.listen5000. This line instructs Express to tell Node that it wants to listen for incoming traffic on port 5000. So even though it's Express that it looks like is actually listening to the port, behind the scenes, Express is still telling Node to listen to port 5000. So remember this diagram, we had said that there is some port or some little door through which traffic is flowing on your machine. Node is waiting for traffic to flow in there, and then that traffic is routed onto Express. So again, even though it looks like this is Express listening to the port, Express is really just kind of turning around and telling Node.js, the runtime, hey, watch for any traffic coming in on port 5000. Okay, so that's the basics of this little segment of code right here. Now, again, if you're already familiar with Express, this might seem like a little bit of review, and hey, that's totally fine. If this is completely new to you and you've never worked with Express before, well, I got great news for you. Everything else that we do with Express is going to look nearly identical to this little segment of code. Almost everything else we do is going to be small variations on a theme with this segment right here. Okay, so that's basically the you know, basics of Express. Let's continue in the next section and start talking about the first task that we are going to attempt to accomplish with Express.